so yesterday uh, we have discussed the derivation of bernoulli's theorem and the application in in its application we have seen venturi meter so here we have derived uh, so i am just briefly going through what we have done yesterday so we have started this lecture from here and uh, we have i introduced you with the concept of conservation of energy and the bernoulli's principle so according to bernoulli's principle as the speed of fluid increases the pressure within the fluid decreases and that is based on the energy arguments okay so we and after that we have derived the bernoulli's theorem by considering this uh, tube or variable cross section and at different height and we found out by the conservation of energy by applying conservation of energy that the total energy is in, of the flowing fluid of the ideal flowing fluid is actually constant after that we have discussed the application of bernoulli's theorem in which we have discussed venturi meter so work of venturi meter is is to measure the flow flow velocity so if we put this venturi meter in between these two end of y so we can measure the velocity of fluid fluid flow the velocity of it and the flow rate using the venturi meter and uh, using the using this difference in the in the meniscus in the meniscus of the capillary tube okay so let's look at one question on venturi meter so the question is a venturi meter is connected to two points in the means where its radii are Twenty centimeter and ten centimeter, and the levels of the water column of the water column in the tubes tubes. Differ by ten centimeter. How much water flows through the pipe? Water flows through the pipe per minute. Options are. Two seven, two seven three five meter per minute. Two seven, two seven meter per minute. Three thousand meter per minute. Two seven three zero liter per minute. So try to think about this question. For your understanding, I will making I will make a diagram for it. So it should be like this. So here is one tube, and there is one tube. Area here is so radii is given that is twenty centimeter. Radii here is ten centimeter. Here again twenty centimeter. So the height difference is the difference in height is ten centimeter. Okay. So try to solve this question. I will discuss it. So, 
it's a direct formula question don't try to derive everything now because you know the formula what what is asking in the question is how much flow rate how much water flows through the pipe per minute so that is flow rate that is volumetric flow rate is asking so this formula is here volumetric flow rate is needed okay so q is a1 a2 under root of 2gh divided by a1 square minus a2 square we can also get it in terms of uh, diameter i am writing it here mm -hmm. so in terms of diameter is q that is for cylindrical so pi square d1 square d2 square divided by 2gh divided by pi square d1 square minus d2 square so what it we get is d1 square d2 square pi and the root 2gh divided by d1 square minus d2 square okay so it is d1 square d2 square pi under root 2gs divided by d1 square minus d2 square so so it is in centimeter so convert it in a meter g you can take in terms of time first calculate everything in a size and then we convert whatever the unit is needed so d1 is 0 0.2 meter d2 is 0 0.1 meter so 0 0.2 square into 0 0.1 square into pi under root of 2 into 9.8 into h is 0 0.1 meter 0 0.1 meter divided by 0 0.2 square minus 0 0.1 square so you can solve this and convert it into the so it the answer come here is in it should be in meter cube per second so you can convert meter cube to meter cube to liter and second to minute so one cubic one meter cube is 1000 liter and one second is 16 minutes convert that and you will get answer that is rounding off after rounding off we'll get this 2727 liter per minute okay now uh, another concept that is very important as application of one knowledge theorem is the speed of reflex what and where we need to find out is the speed of reflex from a speed of reflex of water from a tank to a hole near its base okay so there is a tank with a hole near the bottom so this question has been many has been asked many times in the examination in the daily station in g advance it is very important to know this so it is completely filled with water and there is a leakage such that the water is going like this and if it has a height some height from the from the from the base yeah. then some height from the base so 
So sorry for the interruption. So here, what I am saying is, there is a bucket that is completely filled with water, and there is a hole near the base of this container, and due to which there is uh, fluid is flowing out of it. And we need to find out the velocity through this orifice. Velocity of fluid at this orifice, which we are calling as efflux. Okay. Let's say this height is h. This height is a small h. So, okay. So let's. So we have area of area of this container is that we can consider is a one area here is a two. So applying applying Bernoulli's theorem at in between one and two in between point. One and two. So here it is atmospheric pressure here also and here also. So P naught plus rho g h. That is at so there is a it is the difference in between this point and this point is height h plus velocity here is half. Uh, Rho v one square. Here, let's say pressure is p naught plus half rho v two square, and h is we have taken here. So by applying this, so if let's say, if consider a two is very very small, then a one. Then by continuity, v two is very very greater than v one. Okay. So as a one v one is equals to a two v two, and we know that a one by a two is equals to v two by v one. And we are saying that a one is very very greater than a two. It means to say that a two by a one is very very less than one. And so we can neglect this. Implies that so it is v two v one. So v one by v two should be less than one. Implies that you can neglect v one in compared to v two. So v one you can take zero. So assuming with this assumption, that is generally given many questions. What we get is from here direct this p not cancel out each other. V two we get is this will also cancel with this assumption. So v two is under root of two g h. Okay. So that is the velocity of efflux, or we can call the speed of efflux. Now, sometimes there may they may ask, what is the range of this? So range covered by this water coming out through this hole. I have already discussed the similar question where range is. Nothing but v two into delta t. The time take it to reach there. So we need to find out this time. So applying the equation of motion, s is equals to u t plus half a t square. So s comes out to be h minus h. A is g, u in y direction is zero. So h minus h is equals to half 
gt square and t comes out to be under root of 2 h minus h divided by g so range comes out to be v2 that is under root of 2 gh under root of 2 h minus h divided by g so range comes out to be 2 under root of h into h minus h so that is very interesting because c ranges so you can you cannot think of, about that so it is flowing like this in the presence of gravity but the range is independent of gravity that's the very nice thing that we get so let's take one question the ratio of cross sectional area so here it is given figure is given where there is a orifice so there is a orifice here area is even and it is completely filled with water and this height is given as 3 meter this is let's say h this is 52.5 centimeter and water is flowing out of here velocity here is v1 the ratio of cross-sectional area of orifice to that of tank is 0 0.1 0 0.1 find weak velocity of a flux so for him we need to find v2 options are 50, 50.5, 52, and 51. Let me check the questions. Sorry, we need to find V2 square. Okay, let's try this question and we'll see. Let's try this question. So again, apply bundle is theorem to now we don't need to apply the bundle term. We have a direct formulas for it. So what is given is A2 divided by A1 is equals to 0 0.1. So V1, A1 is equals to V2, A2 by continuity. So V1 by V2 is equals to A2 by A1. So A2 by A1 is nothing but comes out to be 10. Now, from the bundle is theorem, rho g h plus half rho v1 square is equals to half rho v2 square. And h we know. So what h is? 3 minus 0 0.525. So that comes out to be 1.475, sorry, 2.475, okay. So putting it here, so V2 square, we need to find V2 square. So rho will cancel out each other, V1, V1 square, plus 2g h is v2 square. So v1 square is, so we need to replace v1 with v2. So v1 is 10 v2. So that is 100 v2. 100 v2 square. So that is 99 v2 square. v1 is a1. So here, uh, V1 by V2 is A2 by A1. 
and the ratio of cross section of area of orifice to that of time. So, okay, so there is a mistake. You should also keep in mind, read the question carefully and don't do such mistakes, such a such a simple mistake and you ruin your question, ruin your simple question. So, A1, so, so the ratio of cross section area of the orifice to that of this is 0 0.1. So, 8 to this comes out to be 0 0.1. So, V1 is 0 0.1 V2. That is 0 0.1 square V2 square plus 2GH is equals to V2 square. So, it comes out to be V2 square 1 minus 1 divided by 100 is equals to 2 into 10 into H is 2.8. 475 v2 square is 2 into 10 into 2.475 into 100 divided by 99. Mm, so that comes out to be we need to calculate it accurately because all the options are around 50. So you cannot take a random thing. So it is coming out to be 50. So the correct option is and that's all in 50 meter per second. So this is one Another thing uh, related to this is so uh, while pounding out this using this energy balance so totally come with the concept that totally come out with the concept that that here if you need to find out the range or the velocity so velocity of efflux can be found out using a uh, simple concepts of simple concepts of motion in a plane where you can consider a fluid element fluid element is falling under the gravity and he found out the velocity directly like the velocity is 2g h. So that's the height that is the energy gained by this fluid element inside that and that is equals to the so, flu, so the fluid element that is falling from here to here is nothing but Vn is equals to under root 2g h. So that is torsely square. So that is the concept of related to this. Now uh, let's move on to the concept of so so far we have discussed what we have discussed the fluid dynamics of fluid dynamics of ideal fluid okay where viscosity is zero. Now we need to study the viscous stresses change followed by change in velocity due to viscous stress and the shear stress inside the fluid present due to viscosity while fluid is in motion. I have already briefly go through what is viscosity and all, but now we need to look at the effects of viscosity. Okay. So if there is a fluid confined in a plane, there is a fluid that is confined in this plane 
in between these two parallel plates. So suppose you apply some considering the no slip condition at this wall. No slip means velocity at zero. Velocity is zero at if this is z, z direction and this is let's say h so at z equals to zero velocity is zero and at b and there is some velocity if suppose this plate is moving this v so basically we are uh, we are moving this plate uh, and due to this movement, there is a shear stress. So I have already discussed what is shear stresses. The shear stress is the stress developed by the force acting in acting tangential acting in tangential direction to the plane per unit area. So when we are moving this plate with velocity v, there is some shear stress that is developed inside this uh, or it's better to say that this is moving with some shear stress tau that is acting here. So according to this may not be in your syllabus, but it is the generalized statement just for extra information that is the Newton's law of viscosity. Newton's law of viscosity tau is directly proportional to the velocity gradient in z direction. So velocity gradient, so if it is x direction, so that is del u x I can say du x by dz and when we remove this proportional constant what we get is mu du x by dz and this mu is nothing but the viscosity viscosity of the fluid so what happens when you apply shear here so this shear is transmitted by the movement of this layers. So layer by layer, I told you that viscous stress was acting layer by layer and that is transmitting through here. Okay. So it is transmitting inside there and if velocity is zero at here, so the velocity should be maximum at here. So velocity profile should be something like this. So velocity, so there is a velocity gradient you see, velocity here is zero, here is some V because of this motion. That will be balanced by tau, but that we can get by appropriate boundary condition, but don't worry about that. I'm just, the concept is just to tell you about this, uh, what is viscosity and how it is related to the shear stress. So basically, uh, in a very generic deviation, viscosity is defined as the defined as the measure of fluid resistance to flow. If you take an example of water and honey inside this plate and you apply shear stress. So by just by experiment, you will see that water, so for the plate, for the for this plate to move with same velocity for both the case, water requires less shear stress compared to honey 
in order to move this top plate move the top plate with same velocity because velocity of honey is much higher than velocity of oh sorry the viscosity of honey is much higher than viscosity of water okay so this is about the viscous stresses so in general uh, why i am telling you about all these viscous stresses we need to understand the stokes drag okay so in 1855 stokes came up with a derivation derivation of the viscous drag viscous drag exerted by the fluid on any body on any body through which or or better is around which around which fluid is flowing so let's say if there is a water and you have this ball that is some spherical ball and if this is if you drop it here consider that the row of this sphere should be greater than row of water if it is water so when it moves there due so the, it feels a drag due to this fluid so due to the viscosity of fluid due to the viscosity of the fluid a sphere solid sphere a sphere feels a drag and this drag force is calculated by stokes and this the expression for this drag force is 6 pi mu r v for a spherical body where r is the radius of radius of sphere and velocity v is the velocity of velocity of spherical body so uh, in the next lecture i will be going to derive this expression that is an expression for drag force we'll go through deep into the concept of drag viscous drag then i will discuss the concept of terminal velocity and then we'll start the when then we'll start the surface tension the concept of the concept of interfaces and surface tension okay so that's all thank you